Good morning, it's June 23rd, Sunday morning. It's a beautiful day. Um, and I just wanted to spend a few minutes uh, giving a quick tour of my figs that are in containers. Um, and uh, all of these trees were overwintered in a detached shed that I keep at, uh, above, at or above 23 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, and they did not get an early start. Um, I don't have a greenhouse, although I do want to build one at some point in the near future. Um, I tend to keep container trees um, for varieties that are um, that take longer to ripen uh, and uh, that are not as cold hardy as compared to the trees that I have growing in ground. So these are like more of the elite varieties that I grow for flavor, um, maybe not so much for production, although some of them are quite productive, but just varieties that I like to have that just won't do well in, in the ground here. So let's go ahead and uh, I'll give you a little bit of a, an idea what the, the area that I grow them in is like. So this is kind of like the orchard area behind that fence. This is the vegetable garden area. And then I have my container trees right along uh, the vegetable garden area. They pretty much get full sun. I just uh, hooked up an automatic drip watering system to them. Uh, finally, I uh, wish I would have done that a couple weeks ago, but just never quite got around to it. So I'm going to start in here. So these are container trees in sips or um, uh, sub-irrigated planters where you add the water to a reservoir and the, the roots tap into it. This is Del Arena um, and it's uh, it's got uh, it's definitely got a good main crop. It did have some bravas but they they dropped. I think all of them dropped um, for some reason but um, it's probably a little bit root bound but uh, it's got a very nice main crop so hopefully the main crop won't drop. This is Regato di Salento, um, that a new acquisition that I uh, really have high hopes for, and so I uh, put it in a sip a few days ago. Um, this is Osborne Prolific. I haven't tasted this variety yet. Um, it um, has a nice crop on it. It's very healthy. So uh, we'll see. We'll see how it does, how it tastes later in the season. Hopefully, this is Lampiera Preta, um, and uh, this is um, a San Pedro variety. I, I got a couple very nice figs off of it two years ago, and then last year I'm not sure why I didn't hardly get any. This year it has a very nice crop, um, and. Uh, not sure about the how how, how this is going to look, uh, but um, hopefully I'll get a number of nice bravas off of off of this one. <clears throat> and this is uh, uh, Natchez. Uh, what is it? Um, forgetting the name. Yellow Nietzsche's, um, which I haven't tasted yet either, and I have high hopes for it. Has main crop figs on it. So, um, looking forward to those. This is white Madeira. This is my white Madeira that's in a container. Um, and it's uh, put, out in, put out figs pretty early. And it's quite uh, productive. Coldedam Ramada. This is a young tree <clears throat> that I'm kind of in the process of shaping. It's not going to put out fruit this year. It's a late fig. And there's no figs on it yet. It's just too young. So let me start along here. So th these are uh, young figs that I new acquisitions. Uh, and uh, I'm not going to say too much about them. I need to pot up several of these. I just haven't had a chance to do it. Let me go on this side and it'll be better. Um, some of these are unknowns from a guy that I uh, met from New Jersey. They're family heirlooms. Um, and uh, uh, I, I'm interested in finding out how they do down here. Um, a lot of these will go into the ground next year. 
Um, this is uh, LSU Red. This is a grafted tree over here. Borgia's not. Uh, uh, Borges uh, grafted onto Marseille VS uh, Black. This is Coldedam Blanc. Uh, it needs to be potted up. I need to decide what to do with this tree. <laughs> this is Mary Lane Seedless. It's got some nice main crop. It's got Breba and main crop. So uh, this, this is doing pretty good. It also needs to be potted up. Um, this is uh, an Italian fig, um, name of which is uh, Frank Salerno. It didn't put on figs as quickly as I would hope, but it's got a few. Um, okay, let me uh, go over here. This is my a few smaller figs, um, that some of which will go in the ground. Um, next year, this is my cat Ricky, who's very vocal sometimes. Um, this is uh, my Smith in this container here, and it's got uh, a nice crop forming. It's probably going to be the fig that gives me the variety that gives me main crop figs first, I suspect. Um, oh, I'm sorry, this is not Smith. This is Genevieve's Nero AF here in this, this container here. Um, it's gonna give me figs a little later than Smith. So this is Smith, sorry. This is my Smith. And uh, yeah, it should start ripening in early August, I'm thinking. This is Figo Preto in this light colored container. It's, uh, it's got a nice crop forming, as it always does. It's very productive. And this guy here is Coldadam Noir. And uh, it seemed like it took a little longer for it to start putting on figs and they're quite small. Not sure if you can see, but, um, but anyway, I, I'm not sure if I'm gonna get very many of these to ripen this year, we'll see. This is Ponta Tressa. It's got a very nice crop forming. Um, they do drop, in previous years, they've dropped some of their figs, but um, maybe, by, I put it in a larger container, so maybe uh, this year, and it seems very happy, so maybe this year it won't drop. This is Siblawi, a Middle Eastern fig, um, and it's supposed to be extremely sweet. I haven't tasted fruit from it this year, but it's definitely forming a nice crop. This is a Portuguese fig, which is called uh, Moscatel Preto. Likewise, I haven't tasted this one yet, uh, but it's supposed to be an excellent fig. So I'm looking forward to it. I should taste it this year. This is GM 172 in this dark container here. Um, and uh, it's got a nice crop. Um, it's kind of a beast of a fig. A lot of one uh, lobe leaves or spade shaped leaves. Um, so it's, it's a unique, uh, has a very unique flavor. When it's um, ripened really well, it's an excellent tasting fig. This is uh, Bari, uh, uh, which is thought to be a bit like a Mount Etna, but if you look at the leaves, I don't know, to me, this is a bit different than a Mount Etna, but it has a lot of the same characteristics, um, which are good characteristics in general. This is uh, a honey fig called Beryl, and it's, uh, it's very productive, uh, and I really like this fig. It came from uh, Paolo Bologna in Italy. This is a small soda Sicilian that I will put in the ground next year. This is Strawberry Vert. <clears throat> and um, uh, it's it's got a crop forming, although it, I feel like it lags be, it's, it, for me anyway. This variety lags behind White Madeira Number One as far as putting on figs, um, and it doesn't seem as healthy to me. But we'll see how they compare. This is a grafted tree. This is a San Pedro 
the rootstock is um, is Grantham's Royal, and then this graft here, which is growing quite well, is Lampia Preta. Lampia Preta uh, is this graft here, and then the rest of it is is the Grantham's Royal. And um, I tried grafting to this middle branch, but it failed. So maybe next year I'll try again. Um, okay, so this is. Um, this is uh, Filiciano Bianco, and it's got some Brevas. Uh, it's also got main crop forming, and I'm trying, kind of thinking about getting rid of that main crop, but I'm not sure. This is Harry's Crete, a new acquisition this year. And then finally, um, this is, I don't know, I'm not sure about the pronunciation, but Bacon, Bacon, yeah, Bacon, I think. Uh, it's supposed to be a cold hardy fig, it's from France, um, and I'm looking at it as a fig that might do well in the ground. So I'll stop there.